English is always learnt by remedial practice. That means you spot an error. When you read the newspaper, you say, oh, I am making so many mistakes. I am using English, but some mistake is there in my English. So be aware where you require an article and where you do not require an article. Usually almost all nouns other than proper nouns require articles in English, but there are certain places where a noun is used to indicate the general aspect. There we do not use article, that concept is called zero article, but we do not have that slide here. So, I am just explaining to you, please remember. We should help society, society is a noun. Now, we feel like saying we should help the society. The society would mean any one aspect of society, any one part of society. But I am not talking about any one part of society. I am saying that as educated Indians, we should help all aspects of society. Then society should be without article. Suppose we want to talk about a particular society, then we say the society for that particular aspect. If you want to say, I want to help the society which is made out of poor people. So, I am going to help only poor, I am not going to help anybody else. So, there the society is legitimate. Similarly, you know, whenever the government changes auto fares, you might have seen the auto writes pay by meter, very good, that is excellent English. Sometimes they make a mistake in article, they say pay by the meter. This is a very dangerous, you know, meaning wise it is very dangerous because what does it mean? Pay by the meter. That means if my meter is wrong, you have to pay more money. That meaning nobody understands. They feel is it correct pay by meter or is it correct pay by the meter. Here the is not correct because the means that you have tampered with your meter, that you are charging extra, that you are not following the meter. So, we have to be very careful where to use. Suppose somebody says, I am going to hospital, that means that person is going for treatment. If I say I am going to school or college, that means I am teaching there or I am studying there. That means the noun is for its primary purpose. Suppose the hospital is very beautiful, like our Osmania hospital building is so beautiful. You are a tourist, you want to see that, then you say, I am going to the hospital, not I am going to hospital. If you say I am going to hospital, people will ask you, are you feeling ill? Are you not well today? Which means meaning has changed. By putting the article or removing the article, we have changed the meaning. That is why articles are so important. One is that if you do not use the correct article, then your English is not English at all. Because English does not have the sentence without the use of proper articles. Most of us make mistakes in the use of articles. That is why it is very essential that we should be very careful whenever we see the use of the articles. The only way to learn is not from a grammar book, not from a lecture by a teacher who tells you articles are important, but from your everyday occurrence, from today, from just now. If you speak one sentence in English, you see, does it need an article? Did I put an article correctly or not? If you say, people want to learn English, here people does not need article, because we are talking about everybody who wants to learn English today. Suppose you want to say some group, you know the Gurukul, people who are appearing for Gurukul want to learn, then you say, the people who are appearing for this exam want to learn. That means you are making it specific. So, where it is unspecified generalization, do not use an article, that is a concept called zero article. Otherwise, please use an article. Then we come to the noun and verb agreement. Here also many people make mistakes. That is, we have first and second person nouns and pronouns, which take the verb in its bare form. I say that I study, I teach, you study, you teach. But when I want to put it in the third person, I will say he teaches, that means I add es, she teaches or she studies. So, the verb has two forms in the present tense. 
lot of mistakes are made in this. This is called as the noun verb agreement. Similarly, other verbs, you know, the verb do is used for first, second person, does is used for third person singular. Please remember, plural has again the same as first, second person. I say they do the work, he does the work, she does the work, he and she are third person pronouns. I do the work, so I do, he does. This is what we call as the subject verb agreement. So, in all verbs, whether we take lexical verbs or auxiliary verbs, we have this difference in the present tense. The past tense, no problem. Suppose I say that I eat, he eats, but I ate, he ate, no difference. In the past tense, first person, second person, third person, no difference at all. So, in the first person, we have to be very careful that when we are using singular form, the first second person is different from the third person singular. Look at the examples which are given on the board. We cannot say she do not come to school regularly, to college regularly. We can say I do not come to college regularly, you do not come to college regularly, they do not come to college regularly. But the moment you are saying he or she or it, you have to say does not. Similarly, the gardener looks after the plant. Suppose they were gardeners. The gardener and the watchman look after the plants, two people. So, plural, we can use that form. So, third person plural has the same form as first person that is without s. If you add s, it becomes the, you know, when we add s to the noun, it becomes plural. When we add s to the verb, it becomes singular. That is the difference we have to keep in mind. That singular third person verbs always require that form and that is the s form, whichever you are using. Whereas, if you use the verb to be, there are many forms. Say, I am, you are, he or she or it is and they are. So, second person, third person plural have the same form. First person has a totally different form, I am, you cannot use with anything else. You say I am a student, I am a teacher, you cannot say you am a teacher, you have to say you are. This is called noun verb agreement, we have to know which one to use where. Similarly, have and has, only has is used for the third person singular, he has, he has a house. I have a house, not I has a house. Similarly, whenever we use any of the other verbs, we have to keep following s. And where the verb is, you know, requires es, we have to add es also, depending on the spelling. That comes in the aspect of spelling. So, this is the noun verb agreement. Similarly, we have to judge whether the subject is singular or plural. This is what it comes in competitive exams usually, you know. The chairman and not the members agrees to the proposal. Now, so, so look at the structure of the subject, it is so huge. The chairman and not the members. So, the subject is so huge. Here, subject is only one, you know, on your screen, subject is only one word. But here the subject is a huge phrase. So, you have to understand what is the subject. Members is plural. Should we take plural or should we take singular? So, we look at the meaning. The members, uh, the chairman and not the members agrees to the proposal. So, chairman agrees, members do not agree. The members and not the chairman agree to the proposal. Members agree. Is that okay? So, I do not have that on the screen. I hope you will be able to understand these things. So, what you have to do in grammar is not learn by heart and then produce in the examination. Grammar is not done like that. Grammar is done by experience. You try to inculcate the experience of language. You try to inculcate the inwardness of language. Then you get some benefit. Then we have in structures the tenses. You know, we make a lot of mistakes in tenses because 
our language tenses and English tenses have a difference. Suppose I ask one of you, what do you eat for lunch? Then you say, I will eat rice. In our language, it means that I always eat rice. I want to say that I eat rice every day. You know, in our state, we all eat rice in the afternoon. We do not eat anything else. So, but the meaning, the English, what meaning you have given? I will eat rice. That means, till today you have not eaten rice. From tomorrow, that is future, you are going to start eating rice, which is not correct. From the childhood, you have been eating rice. It is not as though you have not been eating rice before. So, we use will all the time. I will study, I will do the exam, I will do without realizing that whether it is future we are talking about or it is present we are talking about. When we want to talk about the present, we use what is called as the universal present tense.